hello good morning join me this morning as I drink my coffee and we will be going to the Methodist thrift store no yard sales the season is over life is seasons as I tell everybody but you know where I got that from the Bible there's a season for everything it says in Ecclesiastes a time to do this a time to do that a time to do the other well, this is my time in life to talk to you all. So sit down. I don't know what I'm going to talk about today. I was thinking about a lot of things, but... And you know, yesterday is gone, of course. Halloween is over. We had a wonderful day yesterday. It was raining, and I enjoyed it. The wind never did get high, thank goodness. Isn't this cute? I tell you what, Grandma tries to look as neat as she can for all her grandchildren and friends out there. When you're 91, honey, you work at it. I mean, I wear wigs and get these little scarves at the Goodwill, and I got this jacket. It's a shirt, really, and it's a batik, whatever that is, from India or somewhere it was made, and I just love it. I may wear this more often because the days are getting cooler and this is kind of warm, and you like it to be a little warmer. Oh, yes, where was I? Good morning, everybody. I want to share this verse of scripture with you, which I thought was so appropriate because, you know, we choose what we do a lot. We keep a good attitude or we get disgusted with things. And I got a note from somebody, comment, which I get from them quite often. And they said, you know, watching the news, I just quit watching it. I don't believe in abortion, and I'm just, it just is not fun to watch, and I'm not going to, and I don't blame that person. My daughters, some of them quit watching it because they see so much stuff, and the Bible says, think on whatsoever things are lovely and good. If there be any profit, think on those things, and you don't want to think about them killing little babies, and that's what they do. But anyway, we're going to choose to do this today. Go out in joy and be led forth in peace. That's Isaiah 55, 12. Probably ought to go back and read that whole chapter, but it's just a little verse that Heirloom Soaps sent me. Thank you, honey. I just love these verses. There's a lot of good ones, and they're so easy to just pick up and read, and it just refreshes your mind of how good the Lord is. And I'm thankful for yesterday, and I'm looking forward to Today, we're going to the thrift store. I don't need any more earrings. And I bought four shirts the other day at the Goodwill. I spent some of the money I make on YouTube. Just reinvest it and get new shirts for a change. So I'm having my coffee and thinking about... This morning, I was thinking about when Kim, my baby daughter, was born. And my husband got fired from a really good job. And we were up the creek without a paddle. When you get up the creek without a paddle, honey, it's bad. We didn't know where we was going to get groceries back then. Our families, they, they were worse off than we were. Mom and Dad didn't have much. Uh, fact is, my father passed away while I was pregnant with Kim, about seven months pregnant with Kimberly. She went full time. Tell you what. She was born in February. I had, I was, and we had insurance when she was born, but after she got about a year old is when my husband got fired from his good job. No, she was probably a year and a half old when he got fired. Enough, she was old enough that I had to get a job and she cried every time I left and it broke my heart. But she was born and we was, <laughs> We was having such a hard time when she was about a year and a half old. I mean, we couldn't hardly get groceries. I had some canned goods on hand. And so I went to the welfare department. And now we had saved $600 for emergencies and stuff. So when I went to see if I could get some help, they said, well, do you have any money in the bank? And I said, well, yes, I have my emergency money. They said, how much is it? I said, well, it's $600. They said, well, you have to spend all that before we help you. 
Well, I said, huh? So I went home. They wouldn't help me, so I had to spend my emergency money for groceries. And I went on a budget that was really strict and started looking for a job because he was out of work. We didn't know what we was gonna do, but we did have that $600, thank you, Jesus. I'm tight, and I do keep something back all the time. I've always done that. It pays, folks. Keep some back. So I always put some back. So I had to find a job, and so I hunted everywhere. And finally, I found a job at a place called Cliff's Truck Stop. I was a waitress, so I got a job as a waitress. And I was a good waitress. Those truck drivers would come in there hungry, and they wanted their food fast, and they wanted it hot, and they wanted it, they'd get back on that road, they're gone again. Now, I had a fellow waitress there with me that I liked very much, and back then, see, that was back in the 1960s, 61, 62, 63, some time along there, many years ago, and she was on speed. That's, that was a, a drug, and the truck drivers would take it to stay awake, and she would get that speed uh, drug, which I never knew what it was, and she would get as happy as a lark, just like that, man. She could wait on tables. She was speeding around there like crazy. One time a truck driver came in and, you know, we lived on our tips and we only made 75 cents an hour. But we lived on our tips a lot and I did pretty good. If they left you a quarter or 50 cents, honey, that was good money. But this truck driver came in and left her, my friend, a nickel on the table. She, he went on out the door, she grabbed that nickel up as she was cleaning the table, and she just chased him right out that door. What's she doing? I don't know. She was on speed. She chased him and she caught him, and I heard her say, you need this worse than I do. Here, have your nickel back. I don't know if he took it or not, <laughs> but that's what she was hollering, because she was so insulted that he only left her a nickel. Then I had another friend. She was beautiful. I'm not gonna tell you her name, no, nobody's names. But anyhow, this truck driver would come in about every two or three weeks, and he would, he'd say, you're so beautiful, you're so lovely. I tell you what, why don't you just go with me? We'll have a high old time, we'll travel, and we'll have a good time. Well, you know what? After a while, I mean, she had two little kids. That's the truth, two little children. She went with him. We couldn't believe it. She got in that and just went with him like she was. Like she was. And she was gone. I, was, I mean, they were saying to me, because I was cute back then, but she ran away with me. And I said, well, no, I'm a married woman. I'm not running away with you. I got a baby at home. But she got lured into it because he promised her all kinds of stuff. He was making big money and made... He, she wouldn't need, he would buy all her clothes. He would do everything she needed because back then even you could make big money driving a truck. I have a granddaughter that drives a big old truck, 18 wheeler. She learned how to drive one. Now that's a whole nother sad story. But anyway, let me tell you right quick what happened. She got this boyfriend and they were together and he had been married and uh, had a little girl. And so she would go on, my, my granddaughter would go on runs with him, riding with him. And he said, you know, you ought to learn how to drive. And they were close, too close. You know how it goes in this day and age. I don't believe in it, but they do it. So anyhow, he, he, she started taking lessons from him and she learned how to drive an 18 wheeler. And they were together maybe a year or so and one day, he, she was, she got her kids, cause Marla, uh, I'm not gonna tell you her name, but she had her kids, Melissa had, yeah, just Melissa, my favorite granddaughter, just love you, honey. Everybody knows this story anyway in our family. But she was taking her kids to Santa Claus land and she had the weekend off and so she, from driving the truck, so she, they went to Santa Claus land and we've always been close. And she called me and she said, Mamma, he is dead. 
Steve is dead. I said, what? She said, he's dead. And what happened was he had a motorcycle and he was riding that motorcycle and his ex-wife was following him on the motorcycle because they was gonna meet up and he had money for her to pay his child support. And she saw him, his ex-wife, run into a tree and kill himself. One of the saddest things that ever happened to Melissa. It was awful because she really liked that young man. But he was gone, so she was left all alone. Well, anyway, I had to work. So this young woman that ran away with the truck driver at the truck stop where I was working, Cliff's truck stop. You know what? About three months later, she showed back up. And do you know her husband took her back? And she moved home. And then she got her job back. And she was waiting tables just like us. True story. And she's probably dead and gone because she was my age and her name was Cindy. And I imagine Cindy's all gone. You know, most everybody I knew, you know, like the waitresses I knew, one of them was my real good friend and she died young. She had a heart condition and she passed away early. I'm not answering that phone. Maybe I will. I just turned it off. I'll call him back later. Whatever. So anyway, I'm about to close this down anyhow before we go to the thrift store, Methodist thrift store. But I've had fun. I've had fun talking this morning, but that was a sad story with Melissa. And she's had a rough life. She got married to a young man that we all liked. And I'm going to tell you the rest of it right quick before I call that person back. She was married to him several years, but he was an alcoholic and he committed suicide. Shot himself right in another room with her. I mean, life is terrifically sad sometimes. I mean, we just couldn't believe that he had took his own life, except he had tried once before and not succeeded. He tried to drown himself, took the overdose, and he was under the water, and Melissa pulled him out. He was in the hospital, and I went to visit him, and he did pray the sinner's prayer and give his heart to the Lord, but the alcohol was stronger than he was, and he could never give it up. He said, he, he told me, he said, I started drinking when I was 12 years old. My grandpa kept, because he lived with his grandpa, kept liquor for us all the time, and we both just stayed drunk a lot. And he was used to staying drunk, but when he was sober, he was the finest young man. And I, we just miss him. But he's gone too. So us that survive, thank you, Jesus. We're going to trust the Lord. And I'm 91. And God only knows what all we'll all see next. But we miss that young man. But good news. He's been gone about a year and a half, her husband. And so she... Her daughter, her 16-year-old daughter said, Mom, you got to stop sitting around here moping and do something about it. So she went on one of those sites of uh, on Facebook where you meet single people and you want to uh, run around some together with them, go out and eat and all that. That's all I ever wanted to do. And I met one one time. I did that. Lots of fish or something like that. I did that. So she met this uh, fella and he is fantastic and now they're very close and they've been together about six months and he wants to take care of her he don't drink he's a sober man and we're just thrilled that melissa is having a wonderful life now and i'm so happy for my favorite granddaughter and she is because she stays close to me and she's the one that helped throw me that big 90th birthday party and her daughter you know Kimberly so I'll hush well this way my brothers Norman and Denny who watch my things all the way through will know what was going on when I worked at Cliff's truck stop and what happened with Melissa they probably don't know much about that because we just kept that all kind of in the family there just me and Kim and Melissa we just kind of kept it down 
for a while, but she's getting on with her life, and that's what we have to do. And Melissa's a Christian, and she's going on with the Lord the best she knows how. God's the judge. People, the Bible says, judge not lest you be judged. So we don't judge people. God knows their heart. We don't know their heart. So we love them for better or for worse, just like Jesus loves us. Of course, we need to follow the Lord and live for him and do the best we can. But let's not be judging people. I'm sorry, but I judge Kamala some. But the Bible also says you can know them by their fruits. And some fruit is rotten. <laughs> and you find that out. So we're getting close to uh, election day. I've already voted for Trump because I don't vote for abortion. And that's what ever, who it was said this morning. They're not watching the news because they're not for abortion. And I'm not either. So praise the Lord. Let's move on one day at a time. And this is good day with the help of the Lord. And we're going to make it. Y'all make it too, the best you can. Walk that path where Jesus would be pleased with us. Sometimes we miss the path a little, but Jesus is good to, if you repent, he knows your heart. Get back on that path. Talk to you later. Love you. Bye-bye.